Okay, so I'm with Suze Hawkins here, who's coming to the end of a two-year ace boxing course uh, here at City College Brighton and Hove. And got a few questions here just to ask her about her time here and see how she's developed uh, as a boxer, as a person, as an athlete. And got a few questions here. First, we'll start off with, uh, so technically, Suze, how well do you think you've developed um, since the start of the course? Uh, yeah, I've changed so much that when I first came here, like, I knew nothing about technical stuff. Um, you know, the mechanics of the shot, I'd never looked at that. Um, I've never broken anything down and looked at um, each phase of the, the shot. Um, and that's definitely coming here has helped me understand the mechanics a lot more. Um, and I've really enjoyed it. I, I love looking at the technical side of things um, and understanding how they all work. Um, I mean, if anything, I probably overthink it too much. Um, and, you know, every shot inspiring, I think, oh, you know, it's that was crap because it wasn't technically correct. And it's kind of, that's like, I get hung up on that a little bit. Um, but no, I don't think it's... At a, least you're a, aware rather than thing. unaware. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy the technical development and stuff. Um, still need to work, you know, a little bit more on, you know, phases and stuff now um, and putting a lot more shots together. Um, but yeah, technically, like, you know, working on the jab and getting a really, making sure the shoulder comes over and it's correct, that's definitely improved a lot. Okay, and what about your tactical development in terms of how you put it into practice in your belt? Um, I haven't had a massive amount of opportunity to work on the tactics as such during bouts, you know, I've only had one bout. Um, and in sparring and stuff, you know, sometimes it's conditioned sparring, so we, we're not working on the tactical side of things so much. Um, do need to kind of like, um, look at holding the centre of the ring more, um, you know, starting to dominate where I want the fight to go as such. Um, so, you know, if, if she might be moving to the right, you know, keep sort of jabbing and then walk onto that right hook. Um, just stuff like that I need to start doing more now. Now I'm um, looking at getting more bouts and things. Um, tactical stuff is a lot more, is now the next stage of development I really need to start looking at. Okay. Uh, and what about your physical capabilities? How have they developed on the course? Uh, definitely got a lot stronger. Um, and I, I think that's just, you know, the case of being in the gym every single day. Um, and, yeah, I, mean, I haven't done a huge amount of strength and conditioning training as such, but I think just boxing every day, you know, you get a lot stronger with that. We do do s &C, um, conditioning stuff within the course as well, so that's, that has helped a lot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sort of physical fitness-wise, um, I don't particularly enjoy cardio side of things so much, so... I probably could have done a bit more of that um, and that again would have helped with the uh, weight loss and stuff as well um, and again work on the more of the SAQ circuits to improve agility. Um, so yeah, I know kind of what I should be doing now and yeah, okay, it's, fantastic. it's a bit better. And obviously nutrition is a big part of things that we do in ACE as well. Um, so how old do you think you've uh, developed your nutritional plan to help you as an athlete? Yeah, it's definitely the ACE course is really changed the way I look at nutrition um, you know sort of just the things like your 20-30 minute glycogen window after training I didn't know anything about that beforehand um, I think that is really important um, and also in the ACE course we looked at you know pre-bout nutrition and things in the lead up week four the, the cutting weight the, the day of the bout um, so that's yeah that's been good um, and especially you know coming up to my bout last week um, knowing what I know through the ACE course was really helpful. Okay. And obviously, um, mental attitudes is one that we've really looked on focus with you as well. Uh, how do you feel you've developed mentally as an athlete, as a boxer? Yeah, it took a while. Um, <laughs> to sort of confidence has always been um, <clears throat> the thing I've struggled with the most. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd say only just now in this last training cycle and towards the end of ACE is where it's actually confidence has finally come um, you know and I think that is you know just completing the course and also you know, having my first bout it's kind of made me realize I can actually everything I've learned I can put into practice and it, it does work um, and I can cope in a bout situation so that's yeah that's helped a lot. Sure, um, confidence also comes from you know, being, being progressively put in more stressful situations and being able to handle it as you go rather than in front of the deep end you know and you've had uh, lots of different 
sparring partners here to move around with, you know, who, who yeah. offer you different problems all the time. Yeah. So it's, it's offering different things to overcome all the time. And once you do do that, obviously that, that's helped um, with your confidence as well. Yeah. Okay, in terms of your, your lifestyle, I mean, it's interesting because uh, you know, obviously you, you work a lot as well, you, know, you live by yourself. Um, how, how do you think your lifestyle has changed? Um, it's definitely pretty full on, um, a lot busier um, than it used to be. Um, I mean, not only the ACE and the training side of things, but we're having to juggle the BTEC stuff and the coursework. Um, that so it's kind of it's good, and I think it's been good for the other boxers as well to start to look at actually having to plan their day um, to fit everything in. And their lifestyle is, you know, they have to start thinking about it, and it's a lot more of a serious um, issue than just sort of rolling out of bed and getting um, up to go training. Um, and just yeah, understanding the importance of sort of sleep, rest, and recovery and stuff. You know, even if you're really flat out busy in the day, you've still got to get your your eight hours sleep at night. Um, and resting, you know, if you're you know in the middle of sort of training and you feel tired um, and run down, you know, do give yourself a break because um, you know you're not doing yourself any favours by sort of going flat out and you'll just end up sort of progressing a little bit. So it's Absolutely. sort of knowing to read the signs of when to rest. Okay, and what about your career aspirations? Have they changed at all? Um, I never really had anything set in stone when I first came here. Um, just I was going to see how, how it went and see how I felt at the end of it. Um, I think I probably wouldn't want to make a career as such out of it, um, but use it more as kind of like a hobby. Um, I'm looking at joining the army this year, um, and I would quite like to box for the army. So I think you know, still keeping it in an enjoyable. Um, rather than a career out of it as such. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of communication, you know, obviously there's lots of like boxes and people and coaches uh, you know, that you cross paths with. How, how do you feel your communication skills have developed? Yeah, a lot. Um, again, just development over the whole sort of scale of things really. I mean, doing the partner pads and the coaching stuff um, with each other helps a lot because it, you know, it makes you, you have to communicate well with your partner to, in order to help them. Um, and you know, so you have to sort of been able to explain not only do the combinations but also sort of teach it um, as well and explain the mechanics of it again. Um, and I think just going to places like Tenerife um, with you know the language barriers as well um, and coaching the people out there and also just sort of things like teamwork and stuff on the uh, on the TD runs, um, sort of all sort of coming together and helping each other out and stuff. So yeah, it's been good. Okay, and one of the uh, overriding uh, modules that we've had uh, for our is, is obviously health and safety, kind of never stops. Um, in terms of health and safety, how do you feel that your, uh, your knowledge has progressed? Yeah, you're a lot more aware of things now than I probably was before, um, you know, because you are living the life of an athlete essentially, so you've got to start, you know, considering the environment you're in. Um, if, you know, say, for example, you're doing sprints on wet ground, you've got the risk of slipping, pulling a muscle, and then that's you out training for the next few weeks. So, um, yeah, you definitely start looking after yourself a bit more, um, you know, making sure you've, you've got a bit of wraps on, you're wearing, you know, decent gloves to sort of look after yourself. Um, and, and yeah, and just look after the other people in the gym as well. Okay. Okay, Sue, so, so um, that's pretty much it now. So you've come to the end of the two years. Uh, thanks for being, uh, <laughs> been, uh, been fantastic working with you, and uh, best of luck for the future. Thank you.